Well, hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. Trying to get over a little head cold myself. Hasn't been going too good. <laughs> been uh, sick now for about two weeks, but I think I'm getting better. So if I sound funny, it's because my head's still stopped up. And I haven't been out here in the shop much because uh, the heat system went out again. And uh, I went to my local appliance dealer and they weren't able to get the parts, so I had to go online and order it. After waiting seven days, found out they couldn't get the part, so I finally had to go to somewhere else. And what it is, the defrost timer board has gone bad. Got 24 volts going to it, but it's not kicking the uh, outside unit on. So I got a little propane heater in here, trying to get the shop warmed up just enough to uh, make this video. You know, a month ago, uh, Mativa sent us this little VHF Murrah's radio to check out. And I was real impressed about the quality of the way it felt. And actually the way it works. I have uh, been five miles and talked radio to radio with this, this unit. And they've done pretty good. I uh, can't complain about them at all. The thing was was to tear this one down and have a look at the inside. And again, they sent me a couple more radios. Now these are the uh, Rectivus RB22. These are DM, DMR digital mobile radio um, UHF ham radios. And again, the quality of the way the radio feels. They got some weight to them. They, I mean, it feels excellent. Uh, one thing they did see with these radios was the Rectivus programming cable, which I did not have. So now we have a Rectivus programming cable in our arsenal. And it looks just like the uh, same one that I've used on my Bofang, which is in the house. But uh, it's got, you know, the chip set in it, I guess, for the Rectivus software. And I downloaded and played with the uh, software for the uh, RB22. So the radio uses the same style SMA connector. To screw the uh, antenna on, there's three buttons on the side, PTT, and there's two buttons that you can program. Now, this radio doesn't have a full programming keypad or menu like you would see on regular uh, ham radios, but it does have what's called a half uh, display. So if we turn it on, you see it comes up right with this power and on, and it comes up channel 16. And then you key it, and you see it says call, and that actually calls the other radio through the digital system. We can see when I key the mic on this one, you'll see it's coming in there's a call coming in. Test one, two. And there's a bit of delay between the two radios because it's digital. So our goal today is not to uh, test the radio to see how the functionality works, is actually to tear the radio apart and see how the uh, radio is built and see what type of quality. Again, these are nice heavy radios. We'll start by taking the battery off. I think this is a 1900 milliamp 14.06 watt hours. It's a LiPo battery pack, 7.4 volt. And we look at the back of the radio again. You can see there's a plate in the back of it, and that is metal. So to get in this thing, 
we got a couple of screws in the top of the knobs that will need to be removed and there's two screws here that needs to come out So we can see here we got two actually proper potentiometers. These are metal, not plastic, as we see in some of the other brands. And we got two uh, collars in here that had to be screwed off. So guys, that's about all she wrote there on the uh, inside of the rectifice or the. 22 we can see in the case over here we have our speaker there's our microphone and there's a ribbon cable going off to the uh, front panel which uh, I don't see no way of getting out without getting in here and uh, actually uh, probably pulling this front face plate off that's glued on so uh, really radios like this are not serviceable um, it's just no way to really go in there and replace a bunch of stuff and these radios when they fail you know they are fairly inexpensive and they're, they're put together at a price you know so don't expect to be able to go in here and work on these um, <laughs> as you can see there's really not a lot going on here here's your control board and I think there's a couple of little transistors and some passives. Then on the other side we have the LCD display. So uh, even there there's nothing really that serviceable. You probably could change out these uh, potentiometers. Which you would have to uh, take the display off. And it looks like there's a ribbon cable here that goes from the main board to the display so I'm thinking if you unsolder here and here you can pop these couple of tabs off and uh, fold that display out if you needed to replace these uh, potentiometers the next thing would be you know is finding the exact replacement uh, this one feels like just like a rotary encoder style and then this one has an off on switch and your volume control now one thing you will note that this is plastic but inside it looks like a copper coated material inside of it so that makes me wonder if that is conductive we'll just take the uh, own meter I got it set on beep and let's just see if this is conductive I'll place it here and go down here and as you see this is conductive so they thought about that when they was putting that together to help shield RF from inside this radio that they took the time to uh, coat the inside of the case with a uh, metallic substance to uh, shield area so here's the uh, the main radio and we'll get focused on it and you see we have an IC chip here this is probably the main IC it's pretty much a radio with a chip um, there's another IC up here a little small IC down here and a bunch of passive components now it looks like we do have a crystal here and it almost looks like a crystal here I'm not sure we'll have to put this under the microscope to uh, 
take a better look at it. Now we see there's a little chip that's missing here in the center, it's unpopulated. This looks like a footprint for some type of package and there's another footprint up here and uh, there's nothing there. Now I'm not going to tear down any further to see what's on the other side of the board. I'm not expecting a whole lot on the other side of this. See here the one connector that connects the uh, control board to the main board just put that little connector there I've got the uh, main board under the uh, Amscope microscope you can get a look at it and there's the uh, main chip and I know it's hard to read those numbers but uh, it is HZ7837 TWN and under that is TC58CVG053H and I've looked up those part numbers and not able to find anything on that particular IC chip I really need to get an adjustable ring light for this uh, microscope because this light that I have on it is not that great and uh, as you can see it's just a, uh, a fluorescent lamp instead of a good uh, quality adjustable LED lamp And we'll scan on across it. You can see several different uh, transistor packages. And there's that other IC that was at top here. That's a 5802N. And under that it says JS630937. And the package just under that also looks like a uh, some type of crystal sitting right there. See if I can focus on that a little better. We can see the. Uh, diode here across the uh, battery leads that's the other crystal that we were seeing And down here at the bottom is another little crystal package. It's hard to tell what it is under this microscope. Looking at it this way, um, I can look through the microscope and see it. And all it's got on it is JYB, and it's like a hundred CE. Again, like I said before, not a whole lot here to service, and I didn't think there would be. I will say the quality of the uh, radio looks, you know, exactly what I expected it to look like, and it's built exactly the way I thought it would be. Uh, on the other side, you know, it's just the uh, battery compartment, and there's your battery connector. So I'll see if I can put this thing back together. Okay, there you go, all back together and see if it still works. Well, that's a good thing. I didn't uh, 
screw anything up, at least I don't think. Here goes in the transmit. Test one, three. Test one, two. Yep, still works. So guys, not a bad little radio for what it is. Like I say, this is a DMR radio. Digital mobile radio. It's a uh, one watt. It'll hold up to 16 channels. It is front panel programmable, but it's a lot easier to do with the uh, software to uh, do all your programming with and it seems to be a very nice radio and I haven't played around with any DMR radios since I have been a licensed amateur radio operator uh, <laughs> um, mostly you know been sticking with analog stuff I know some of the repeaters around here has gone digital and I have yet to uh, play with any of those so I'll play with the programming on this and for me to surprise myself with how to uh, program and what to put in it and uh, I'll give this thing a try out on UHF and see exactly how it does. Now I've had several representatives from Rectivis or Retivis or however you want to uh, pronounce it uh, contact me about reviewing other radios. And, now I've got one that's uh, contacted me and I told her it's pretty much done two UHF radios now or handheld radios and i like to try out one of their dual band mobile radios. But one thing I am interested in is that Rectivus makes a small repeater. It's a uh, RT-97 they have uh, different flavors of it. Uh, they have a VHF repeater, a UHF repeater, um, GMRS repeater, and several different ones. It depends on which frequency you want. So I'm kind of interested in uh, one of that UHF portable repeaters. I would like to try it out. Now, I'll probably make that purchase myself. I don't know if I can get them to get off of... Uh, something that costs as much as that repeater does but it has the built-in duplex service I just like to try one out uh, and see how it does anyway guys uh, I hope uh, this was enjoyable to you like I say it's not many and there's not much information at all on the RB22 I think there's two videos here on YouTube one is on programming and uh, there's another one that just kind of shows the radio doesn't really do anything so this will be the first tear down of one all right guys everyone take care uh, I'll leave the links below to this radio and we'll catch you in the next one bye now